what are you advocating for here at this uh, protest or rally? Um, I'm trying to advocate for an end of a culture and like for us to understand that yes means yes and like my meme says, Failing to resist for whatever reason is not a form of consent and just trying to spread the word and knowledge about how um, actually trying to debunk a lot of the myths behind sexual assault and try to replace them with like the actual information. Okay, what kind of myths uh, have you found? That is, uh, you know, worthy to be debunked. What kind of myths have you come across? Well, one myth I've learned about is that you know that fight or flight response. That has to be intergenerational. It's specific to like men and like that and women. Typically, um, they're like the flight or flight response that comes out in a friend or freeze, and that is the lot reason why women don't always fight back. Mm -hmm. And. Okay, so the next um, group I want to invite up that's is That's an explanation thing. and um, the idea that so not resisting Hallway, implies consent and teacher, also just for provider. us guys to learn some fucking self-control. Do you think there's a lot of guys don't have c control as well? What do you think about women not having control as well? Do you think it's only women that can get raped? But what about uh, well, Mel? Absolutely Mel's not. Like absolutely um, not. Like. Guys can be raped too, and women can. It's again, can be the perpetrator. It's not in like it disproportionately affects women, like with one in five or six versus one in thirty to seventy. That doesn't make it okay. And also, like it marginalizes those guys when you just make it entirely about women and it deny, it ignores a really important facet of the conversation when you do that. Well, I think you make it a good point in that, um, I think, that, yeah, the conversation is like, we're, we're against rape, right? So that's to be genderless, you could say, right? Because you look yeah. at, if you count like the number of men in prisons, like they outnumber the national statistic of rapes that occur. Yeah. Exactly, and it's not, and I don't know, like, did you ever see Red Sparrow? No. Okay, well, there's this one scene in it um, and the gist of it is like the guy who was the rapist and didn't want sex they wanted power and like and a lot of it is like the the fact that we can that people get can, can get away with okay. it and that's just so not my name is Lacey okay uh, right what about um so you were talking about statistics are faster things myths also, to be debunked did you know that uh the one in five statistics is kind of really far away from the actual numbers like uh, the bureau of justice posts out like like maybe one out of 54 that's still a lot right but it's a far cry away from one in five because the thing with one in five uh even the people who publish that report say don't use it anymore that's not a, a report to be passed around they didn't uh good to hear thank you yeah 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 this is something i didn't you know, looking into this matter because the thing is they didn't word it carefully define their terms it's kind of what you want to do so they it was so loosely based that everyone made it seem like they're the all being sexually assaulted right that's also a difficult word sometimes to describe you know what rape is we cannot we can, we define that but a lot of people would say sexual assault could be um, not just like groping but it could be like catwhistling you know people would call that yeah or like constant bullying someone who's just really not Perhaps okay but into trying to be in a relationship with them in sixth grade <laughs> yeah 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 um so i guess in terms of um so it's, it's gonna hear then like an advocate against uh against rape here also acknowledging uh men's issues in this yeah, area and it's not and it's like not just like rape it's like again it's like groping cat calling and all of the the other stuff the too right rape jokes discharged. would you say um here, though, is like we have laws against rape, right? Against Western culture since Roman times have had given like death penalties. See, in the United States, uh -huh. there's many states that had death penalties to, against rapists for a long time. Uh, I mean, there's, I don't know anyone that's pro-rape, right? You know, we have a very good culture that's very much against it, that vilifies it, that, uh, you know, puts a lot of uh, anger towards those issues when, when it comes up. Would you then then say that it's fair that the dominant culture here, outside like Hollywood, what we saw with Weinstein, is actually a, a, a rape culture? Um, well, you could definitely make the argument that we make public gestures of vilifying it, but there is like an underculture of silence and com 
publicity, like the with like all evidence, the people who knew Harvey Weinstein and, and were probably drugs. close enough to him that they what could they realistically was, know about victim. all the sexual assaults that so he was her? doing, but just not doing anything Spoiler about it. So alert, like, even no if we do like claim victim. to do that, there is the still, there are still a lot of like victim. undercurrents that so are covering it up. Cases. Okay, all right, so yeah, so this will be underground. So this will be like the the corners or the outliers of our society. Yeah, there's going to be some cruel people just like Weinstein and the things that go on in Hollywood. Like it's beyond the scope like what us normal people know about what's going on in the day-to-day -day things uh, like in Hollywood. But I would think then um, that as a, as a majority of our culture, we're pretty much good. I mean, in terms of places like elsewhere, like uh, in Turkey, they almost passed a law that said. My if you rape a child, face. you can get out of prison if you marry that child. I mean, that's, that's a rape culture, right? If, if, when they have laws that says if you're raped in a Muslim majority country, HIV you need to have four witnesses to, to show <laughs> that you're raped, right? To knowingly transmit oh, the virus to two different women. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, Absol ruined. Absolutely, but he was like, to even if we don't make as much of a. Just even if we don't like do it as highly as we do like shouting like talking about how rape is unacceptable um there's still like the a lot of cultural double standards about um well she didn't vote for who's sitting in that house you have like you have sex with a lot of guys yes like you don't and you're either a prude or a tease, and that's just fucking Last stupid year, and a, a major factor behind, like, why the, why monsters like Weinstein or the one in the White House the could get away with it. Or the one uh, August 4th before the White House, two White Houses ago, Bill Clinton. Clinton. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'm not <laughs> pretending he didn't do anything either. And fun fact, Bill Clinton and him. Donald Trump were both um, friends with a Mr. Charges. Jeffrey Epstein, who was like However, a crazy pedophile. I heard something about uh, an After island, a pedophile. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then what did you say then? What, 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 do you, what did you think that after the Weinstein thing? Why do you think you didn't see like a march happened. against that kind of stuff out there? Nothing is it because it. a lot of the stuff is very liberal, right? There's a lot of Democrats behind a lot of these marches. And the people in Hollywood are liberals and Democrats as well. Do you think maybe that's why there's a resistance to march against? I didn't see a lot of outcries, you could say. Where's the march against like that kind of real, you could say, a rape culture? in that niche community today, of Hollywood. Know who we are. Okay, we are um, I definitely racist. think, we like, a lot of me, like, it's probably a lot bigger than we Carl, think we it is or could possibly know, and Daniel it's really King's big race, amongst people in power, like the media, and today. I think, like, it doesn't matter okay, that he's dead. when it doesn't you matter. have, like, the March for Our Lives, for example, that was really family, big. The media had been fueling those flames. So, and it you know was what? like 800,000 people. One of the people who was there said that they couldn't so see the end of the crowd. I couldn't see the end one way or the other when I was there. And that's because, like, that's a sexy story for the media to cover. Yeah. Rape is not, like, sexual assault culture is not a sexy story for the news to talk about. Hmm. I guess you could say that. Um, I think some areas of culture kind of lambast like it makes it like males are like uh, the oppressors like they like to CBS dress it up like all males are like part of this rape culture and like you have to teach males not to rape it's like look, i grew up with good, like i mean i have, I have good so parents um i don't think that, you know in terms of that i don't think it has to be like sitting me they down and teaching me like not to rape i think it does like a, a great slander and justice to men and kind of demonizing them like i see this sometimes in schools like like men are like uh potential rapists or like potential villains and evil kind of scum of the earth there is um, no how do you feel about those kinds of attitudes those days, I that, say, remember, that people, sisters, men do encounter? We sometimes. fought the monster and um, we live to tell about it. I don't think it. we it's just entirely we fair just to sisters. say that we are fucking like, champions. Like all men are potential rapists, but I definitely think like our culture doesn't do enough to talk about what is like consent so and what again, isn't here we are and doing it for ourselves. Um, getting our names out, getting his again, name out, getting. I think that's a fair point. Yeah, like for years I felt so alone. Our culture could do better at suddenly, teaching guys Chrissy, about like who kicks consent and what and isn't I want to thank consent. Her here today for doing and that. there are over like, three thousand no, signatures again, on like, that no, Patrick, no, Patrick. Slutty, <laughs> no, Patrick, slutty clothing is not consent, and alcohol, like. alcohol does not make rape okay either. Right. Well, see, they'll say then, like those are ones that like. 
certain elements of our culture, culture do try to use as a defense and I know that there are of men in this these world really disgusting one. actions I am married and to ultimately like getting with like ultimately says, deep sorry, like what can I do sh like shutting yes. those ideas down is like going to help like so people we like get that men aren't a all bit of a potential rapists you know but, in the but the thing about uh, like you're mentioning march for our lives right the, the gun uh, situation there's some people that advocate That's like getting rid of all guns okay. from people do you think that would be like more towards uh the benefit of a rapist for a female not be able to defend themselves then don't you think then the best deterrent against a would-be rapist is armed women or armed men as well hey, good morning, right everybody. Oh, you, okay, so you really want to play with that? Like, uh, people don't, balance. like, people should not really need guns to uh, not, like, to, to like, you yeah, don't need a gun to defend yourself against a rapist um, if our society understands so it's that it's me. not okay to, now, for five years. like, they, if uh, men learn impulse control, then they won't, so really then, then no one will need then people won't need the guns to defend themselves. And like the, everybody, everybody being safer with a gun thing, that's total bullshit. What do you think about like a lot of the perpetrators who are rapists and people who sexual abuse, aggressive men, uh, they have a history of uh, being sexually assaulted themselves. And a lot of them do identify as women being the perpetrator of sexually abusing them uh, when, they, when they were children, right? I mean, it seems like this is a cycle that we're seeing. Like we want to say like maybe uh, you're, you're saying maybe guns are not the solution, and you're trying to say teach men, so really but a lot of them, like 45% of them, also identify a female perpetrator in terms of the sexual abuse. I mean, we talk about... Okay, then teach everybody. Right, including women, you can say, right? It's funny, because you mentioned the media will always show, like, hey, look at the sexy teacher uh, sexually abusing this child in high school or middle school, right? And people are like, oh, my God, way to go, kid. But if it was a guy, a male teacher, doing that to a female student, you know, they're vilifying this evil, right? The female doesn't even get enough, to, the same amount of gel time as a a man who does the same kind of uh, atrocities to a child. I'd have to look that up. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, uh, female students, show, you, this happens like all the time. You find it like on your Facebook feed, you know, women are like, abuse is, uh, But yeah, it's like trying to like just, just have these conversations the is like part of how, like there's a lot of stuff that's like socio-cultural. Like one thing government boys. can do is like introduce sex ed and Here's consent ed earlier in school, but a so lot of it is cultural is and ultimately that isn't entirely the government's place. Really uh, one thing that the government do, can do is like kind of legally make that. sure that sex, so truly, sex abuse well, is love, inherently like, consistent I've never in like gender and how it, people are held accountable for it. Assault. Right, I think uh, I don't, I, don't, really I think the accountability, not so much the accountability, I mean, even being accused of a sexual assault or rape just will ruin your life, right? And I mean, we're supposed to be holding it over innocent until proven exactly. guilty, but even like the accusation in this culture hates rape so much that they'll like drive a person's reputation to the ground even before they go to court, even there's no evidence. Um, there's like this Air Force test a survey that they did for people who were raped in the military for four years. They found nearly half of them were false reports. Right, so I think the evidence is kind of very important towards these, these accusations uh, that we put out there before you ruin someone's life. Um, so I think um, the point I'm trying to say is I think the culture here, the dominant culture, is pretty much anti-rape. Uh, we'll find different niches like Hollywood niches, which we have no relations to, right? Um, but I think for, for the most part that the rape culture is kind of non-existent. I mean, no one here is going to be pro-rape. I think you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone here in D.C. unless Bill Clinton's looking around or Bernie Sanders because he once wrote saying that women, when he has intercourse with a man, fantasizes about being raped simultaneously by two other men. What the fuck? Yeah, he wrote that. I need... Where did you read that? Oh, yeah, Google. It's Bernie Sanders, uh, rape fantasy. Like 40 years ago, he wrote that. Um, so, aside from that, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone to be very much pro uh, in favor of that. Just for the smell. I'm sorry, but that. Yeah, yeah, is look so it up, look insane. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to look this yes, up. Yes, yes, look it up, look it up. Like some sort of magic mountain built from your carbon scarred soul. Bernie Sanders. I begin to smell the relief. Rape fantasy. Sleep. See, he's trying to explain it. As satisfying <laughs> as a county fair. And it'll be in a. Uh, a couple's first date. It should be right there in the first paragraph. Let's go down a little bit. Flying above the man with the hook for a hand. Where does it Let say? Keep going down. Here's the quote. 
uh, a man goes home and masturbates his typical fantasy. A woman on her knees, a woman tied up, a woman abused. A man enjoys intercourse, a woman enjoys intercourse with her man as she fantasizes being raped by three men simultaneously. If only for a minute. Grandpa Bernie. If only here. So I would say though, aside from those people, you would be hard, you're like, no. I would say you'd be hard pressed to find anyone here that's that's pro rape that advocates. You'll find everyone here that says yes, uh, consent is, is a great thing in terms of relationships with people. Um, so I, I just I'm just kind of just questioning, uh, critiquing it, right? I think we want to find some of this stuff. Go to the prisons where men are being thrown for victimless crimes. A lot of them for for canvas. Yesterday was a for, happy for 20 day, right? Yeah. And victimless crimes, people thrown into cages for 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 plants. And a majority of the, of the rape uh, victims are men in those prisons. Well, definitely in prison My culture, like, that, like I'm a middle school student and I was a conservative. Definitely in prison, like, rape goes, like, really far, but um, one thing with, like, Throughout my life, I having fantasies and like recognizing that is slept. like different from recognizing that those fantasies are inherently bad and not acting on them. Are you starting to defend uh, Bernie then? <laughs> like, this kind of, like, I'd have to read the full essay to yeah. be sure, but it sounded like so, there is like a community that consensually engages in stuff like that, the BDSM community. Yeah, and that is what I think slash hope he was talking about, but I, again, am going to have to look into that essay in full just to be sure. Of course. Um, so, and like some people like... Um, I'm not a professional psychologist, so if you can find like stuff to debunk everything I'm about to say, then by all means you have every right to do so. Sure. And like as I have done earlier, I can acknowledge my mistakes and correct them. So, um, I looked into like the psychology of BDSM and like a lot of it's like people just want to be like okay so this might be a little weird tangent but like mardi gras was like originally like just liberation from com social conventions and norms and sometimes like that kind of stuff can manifest sexually like wanting more control and that's ultimately like psychologically what I think BDS am interest or maybe you're feeling come some I could be entirely wrong and if I am then by all means go ahead and just make sure I'm doing I'm yeah, 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 yeah. talking about like the right stuff. Right, right, right. Well, I, I think uh, what, what Brenner wrote, I guess it's definitely uh, might be of interest to you to look up. I don't know what his BDSM or kinks are, um, but uh, I would say then uh, going from from that, going, recalling right back for a second to uh, the gun march thing. Um, so you're saying that? Do you advocate then? Uh, no guns be everyone have no guns? Are you advocating for government to take the guns away from? Oh God, no. no okay. God, no. Right. That's like. I'm pretty sure you'd be hard pressed to find someone on the fringes who wants to take all guns away. But if you really want to ask, like, you know how, like, cars are licensed and everything like that, but no like, no one's arguing that, like, regulation to make gun cars safer is the same as, like, taking all cars away, right? I wouldn't advocate for a government to even get in the way of licensing you and giving you permission to drive your own car. <laughs> It's their property. And cars actually kill more people than guns. So so we lower the speed limit to like maybe five miles per hour because at least it'll save only one life. And I'm glad I did. Okay, look, like the point is like car deaths were a lot more rampant before we included like seat seat belts and airbags and stuff like that and requiring people to like you know, like if you get drunk while driving you lose your license and a couple of things that i believe we do not need military style weapons for anything 
like military style assault hey, weapons that. and if you think that oh, yeah, the Armalite rifle oh my god a liberal who knows what that is <laughs> Lewis, and it actually stands for like the Armalite rifle uh, has like any civilian right? purpose She's like yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a time fighting. article sure. where the descendants of Eugene Stoner and, uh, the guy who invented she, the uh, Armalite rifle design 15 you know and they said like that's a military style weapon i don't think we need military like anyone needs a military style weapon for anything and ultimately it's going to be like for hunting like a bolt action rifle is just fine if you can aim sure and also with like home defense like i honestly prefer like a pistol or a shotgun ideally a pistol because like that's like Last just the like anniversary of the you hear something like if you have a pistol on the night and say you can just like grab that and go then but with like an assault rifle you gotta like get the strap on you gotta like get both your hands ready and it and like if, and like it's easier to, and you would need to have like a special flashlight attachment for like your AR-15 or your AK-47 or whatever, but a pistol you can hold it in like your other hand. But you need a flashlight for the for the to gun see. too, right? Get to see. Flashlight attachment. So you can have that already on your on your rifle. Uh, I mean, you can just pick it up. You don't need a sling, right? Uh, I did the military, so we had to hold the M4s, M16s all the time. So the training and stuff like that, just like you would train with a regular handgun. I mean, handgun. People say, well, it's a, it's assault. Um, it's a military grade weapon because the military uses this, but they also use uh, M9 millimeter Berettas. So should we not also have handguns because the military uses it also? Okay, so regarding that, like pistols do have home defense purposes. So given the fact, but assault rifles, they're only to like kill lots of people very, very quickly, and that's why. I'm but of those of pistols you can easily make the this was designed for a home defense argument with hunting rifles like bolt actions mm -hmm. the guy who made the armor light uh, it was for civilian cell before the military adoption um, but what do you think then about uh, the justification for to have us yeah they are uh, it was uh, for civilian cell before the military adopted uh, the r uh, 15 style rifles now the um, what I want to say in terms of, like what do you think about the argument though to have these weapons and the event that government becomes like tyrannical, as history has shown time and time again, that eventually that seems to be the long run of things. Uh, books have been written, 1984. Um, you have, uh, you know, people are calling Trump and fascists. Like, do we really want them to have uh, these kinds of weapons <laughs> and not us and ourselves in our own possible defense? I mean, look at the, the Jews during World War II, right? Um, well, um, in this country, we had the Second Amendment the entire time, but that didn't stop the internment camps or from World true. War II yes. or the Trail of Tears with the Cherokee. And Taylor actually loosened gun regulations for non-Jews, he only took from Jews away, but that didn't stop him from establishing. But like the fact that other civilians had guns didn't necessarily stop him from establishing. The Warsaw Ghetto uh, Uprising did a good job in uh, putting a long determent. I mean, at least if they're going to go out dying, they're going to choose their own terms and go out fighting, right? Instead of marching peacefully into those uh, train camps. Um, but the uh, also the um, the Indian trails and all that stuff. They had they did a gun confiscation. And their excuse was this for your safety and ours, and then they slaughtered them. And you're right about the the internment camps, right? A lot of people don't even know. I mean, that you know, even here in this country, that's a form of tyranny, like you said. Yes, sending Asian people into camps just because they're Asians. They're supposed to be Americans. And ultimately, like, if the government went real big bravo with all the advanced military weaponry, you're basically just going, like, even if, like, they did go all 1984, like, they've got all kinds of advanced toys. So, like, even if we did have, like, lightsabers and, like, like many will not speak up, share their and like assault rifles. Like, what are they really gonna do against like an M1 Abrams tank or something like that? So ultimately, like, it's gonna be tactically useless, and the government's gonna be able to paint you as a terrorist. So yeah, honestly, helping them if you try to do it like that, may like maybe theoretically you could like organize with a bunch of other people. Look at Vietnam. Vietnam were 
superiorly, uh, I mean, they're, they're inferior to the might of the United States helicopters and napalm and all that bombing and artillery that they had. They're just rice paddy farmers. <laughs> and they were able to withstand and, with, and stop. And uh, they had the Tet Offensive and push back for a good time being. Uh, a stronger military might. This rice paddy farmers. And here, most well armed populace on this planet, that's, you could say, is better well armed and equipped than the military. Uh, you know, from the lowest bidders of uh, armaments that they get. I think we can do, or do well on our own. But that's not to say, like, do you really think like veterans will fight against veterans? Because there's veterans in the civilian world, yeah. not in the military, you know? And also, um, you want to know where the Viet Cong got a lot of guns from and stuff like that? China. And Soviet Union. But my point is, like, they had extra. Like, there are two things that a uh, guerrilla uprising needs to be successful. You gotta have, like, uh, like an illegitimate government, Sophia, which, like, in a 1984 sorry, case, you might be able to, like, if they don't brainwash everyone, you might have that. And you got to have, like, an external sanctuary. And ultimately, like, where are we going to go? Court accountability for all survivors. Like, ultimately, like, the only, like, success, like, you might have, like, some along, like, the northern and southern borders. But, like, in, like, the rest of the U.S., not so much. So at that point, I think a lot of the military might stand out and not uh, obey and follow those orders. Because you can, un if you find a command to be immoral, you can unconsciously not follow that, especially against your fellow Americans. It has to happen where they go against that, for sure, absolutely. Um, but the point is that we see then an example, pattern history, that governments do turn against their own people. Like the United States military, 50 million people in the 20th century alone, right? Democide is, is a thing that happens all over the world. I think a safeguard for ourselves, not just against Woodley Burger, or so would be rapists could be also the inevitability when these things do occur and that people ends up dying in the tens of millions is against the government. One thing that you just mentioned, like soldiers standing now, like the army stands down and turns against a tyrannical government, what do we got to do? Uh, join them. That was my dream. That has been my dream. What? Join them. It's here we're losing our freedoms, not overseas in Syria. Right. I think the military should kind of stand down from uh, drone bombing children overseas and call it collateral damage. Uh, get out of the Middle East. <laughs> we have no business. Our freedoms are not there. It's here where we're losing them. Right. It's here at, at the White House, here in the Capitol, where people legislate away our rights and our freedoms. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, if there was such a moment where they were to turn against the government, we could easily just join up right with them. I mean, you could join up with them if you really want to, but if like they're already gonna do it anyway, then like, why would you need to? Like, if they're gonna do it, like, then you don't have to. How about this then? If, if you don't want, I guess, assault weapons, I'll never stop you from not wanting to get one <laughs> or a rifle, right? I'll never stop you from. Want, not wanting to get a rifle, um, and I will, and, and I will respect your bodily consent. I won't force you. I respect your property consent. I won't force you not to buy a product you don't want. Would you grant me the same thing in respect to my consent and my uh, property rights to have my own rifle to protect myself and my family? What kind of rifle you want, and do you really? And like, as well, what in order is to going on subdued. with you that you seriously believe that it, this is going to happen? You guys, we, we well, you have, have uh, you have two million people, two million people in these cages, most of them for victimless crimes. Uh, you have like uh, the police a shooting people's dogs cheat. all the time. They firebombed a community in Philadelphia, West Philadelphia, a while ago. Oh yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah. So like, you, you have we instances where the government does do great many of these things on people, and as they continue, their monetary supply continues to get. Uh, inflated, you know, they're going to keep coming for more of your property to kind of fund these unnecessary wars, to kind of fund this corrupt, uh, bankrupt uh, government. And eventually, you know, you look at uh, Detroit where they kick people out of their homes. You know, at some point, you kind of have to stand down and stand your guard against that sort of stuff. No, but they, they do come after Americans. They do come after people. They do come after, uh, they come after your dogs, even. What new salad are you with? Uh, I'm independent. I'm not uh, with any left or right wing uh, news media, Fox or the Huffington Post. I do this as a hobby.
for oh, generations yeah. before you guys yeah. what website? here. What website? Uh, just my name, Cal Moline. I'm with the group in Richmond. Better. So we want to create a, a free society uh, away from government. One in which our relationships are consensual because we have no consensual relationship with government. The community. Because um, they can tell you what you can and cannot do with your life, with your body, with your property, you how much you take from your paycheck. So uh, if you don't pay your property tax, they foreclose their house, throw you on the street. Um, so, so we want to create a society away from that Americans involuntary relationship that violates consent in a daily matter with government and, and just create a free, peaceful society and outside of that. Just because Interesting, but like this country a, wants to like you keep know us um, and neutralized so that, that we don't get like, our land back. The fact that like that I'm asking like, you to okay, communism to ideally sure you functions without like a government. So like, other people, but like the fact that communism can't really be implemented There's because it no can't without answer. We've known a government and like com like Marxism inherently doesn't really understand like the Hobbesian elements of human nature. Like ultimately, like doing for accountability like even if it's like, like we do I need a government because like we really don't have the inherent self-control like who is I took a psychology class well, like a sort of psychological class it was on zombies two, but we were looking in like morality and how the world is going to work in a zombie apocalypse a, and Morality can be broken up into three stages. How could I lose custody um, my child to him? Basically, well, like six stages, and they're in three groups. I can't remember me. their names. The first two are based off of is it like, am I going to be punished for like for people defining their morality? Am I going to be punished for this, or is this going to make me feel good? That's one and two. Three and four are basically in, like in, in, in what the society like what society says is the right thing to do. That's what is the right thing to do. Like the concept of the social contract. I had the seen five and over six and over heinous um, cases where women were being criminalized for protecting themselves. With five and, and six, you ultimately that um, that that's post convention post conventional morality. That was what it's called. And with post conventional morality, that's where like so you sit there all okay, day the and government has like a pretty good idea, men, but like it is inherently wrong. But some issues like these things are right or wrong regardless of what the government is. Most people don't get to five and six. Most people stay in the first four and they ultimately rely on a government to create a society that like where people have some common What's happening understanding to of what is good and what is bad. Okay, so and people who like are ultimately, in this like democratic government is the best because it gives everybody, like, theoretically, I, it gives everybody a say in what those standards are. All of that trauma okay, I, I could see. Uh, so your idea is that like people need government because you don't trust them to their own activities. Absolutely not. Well, then the last thing you want to do is, well, if, if, if you feel that that's the nature of man, then the last thing you want to do is create an organization that has nearly unlimited power and empower men you cannot trust with on their own proclivities to be a part of government. Then the last thing you want is a government. That's what che checks and balances. We're one of, yeah, that's, that was the experiment, right? 1776, uh, an inferior force of Americans fought uh, one of the world's military might, the strongest in the entire planet, the British, and we defeated them, right? And then uh, they thought maybe the experiment through checks and balances we could prevent this from ever becoming as tyrannical as Britain. And look where we are today. Today, 200 military bases all over the world, right? Yeah. Checks and balances from governments cannot restrain that evil once you start off with like 1% evil, 2%. Now it's like, it's unlimited now. Obama can uh, assassinate U.S. citizens without due process of law now. They, they don't care about the laws that they write. The laws only apply to us, not to the rulers. That there is accountability. So, so, do you really you think like we need to instigate a rebellion? Or something? I mean, maybe uh, you could we say an internal rebellion. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you need like maybe a good three percent. 
uh, people only took 3%, for example, of the uh, Americans during the Re American Revolutionary War. 3% of the population to, to get there, create a paradigm shift. You don't need to convince everybody. There's a good, strong uh, minority, you could say. But this is a long-term game, right? Um, and most revolutions are not that bloody or um, messy anyways. Look at uh, the fall of USSR. The Eastern States of Europe was not, you know, embroiled in civil war and battles. So it was very peaceful secession. And that's kind of what I want. It was an anomaly. Yeah, but the fall of the Soviet Union was a major a geopolitical anomaly. And it was like, like most of the time, if it, like, that was like one of the only times when a single party style authoritarian regime fell peacefully. Like China is like a single party authoritarian drifting toward a more personalist where it's like Saddam Hussein, Fidel Castro, like we need to fight where back. it's based on a cult of personality, a but I, what like I with single, but sure like that was one style, and it was inherently an anomaly, and, and not typically survivors. how that plays out. Like with personalist regimes, they got no way to go, so it's ultimately super violent. So, not always. We say, uh, well, I say there's history, there's patterns to show economically when these things kind of falter that it comes down peacefully. Um, we're a little loud. Okay. So, what do you, what do you think then? Do you think you can, you can live the way you live without government? What What do you need about government? That you need help to be who you are, to be this good person uh, that you identify as, as as a part of you. Do you need government to tell you how to to guide you towards that, or do you think you can live your life very peacefully? Uh, that consent is part of your your interactions with other people, and you don't need a. Uh, Strangers you've never met, just because they call themselves politicians and wear a different costume than you, uh, to tell you how to live your life. Could you do that? Um, I don't know, but like I probably could, but like you would have to like put me in a Lord of the Flies situation to really find out. Like we can talk about that with the luxury of like being in a society like we can talk oh we would do blah 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 and if we were outside but until like we get on an island on our own absent of society none of us are ever really gonna know who we really are and most people are inherently bad and you like to talk about like government for example as like examples of that and like look at them like they don't get held accountable and they do like a bunch of inherently terrible shit yeah yeah they do yeah but ultimately like violence gets you demonized in this like trying to like even though we did do that as like a violent like our nation was found in a, a violent act like you're gonna get more like violent overthrow of the government is just gonna get you marginalized like hardcore i'm not advocating for like necessarily a violent overthrow i just want to outgrow the size of government right I just create our own thing like the Amish have their own thing i mean they're kind of pretty much separated from government they don't pay like social security tax there's a lot of taxes they don't participate in uh -huh. and they, they have their own rules they have their own communities so uh, they're a certain age they're able to opt out of public schools and they have their own way of life right and they're not and they can do it without having to violently overthrow government and that's what i mean to say like we can have our own voluntary consensual societies within each other because our relationship with government is not consensual, right? There's no contractual relationship with government. Uh, if they say they want to tax it, they'll tax it. They pass a law that says you can't smoke a plant, you can't smoke a plant. Uh, you don't have a relationship that's consensual to say I can withdraw and give that permission at any time, because that's what consent means, right? Would you say your relationship with government is non-consensual? Um, I don't really know, like, but, like, in depth, in democracy, like what was supposed to have, like was supposed to be given a choice, and we definitely need to have new people in charge that will actually hold those people accountable. But like ultimately, like you talk about wanting to break us up into like a community-based society and get rid of the concept of the nation-state, theoretically. So like, how are you gonna get there? Very uh, good. Secession is inevitable.
all empires collapsed. The dollar's lost 97% of its value. It's got 3% left to go. Uh, look at Detroit as an example. These, these are unfunded liabilities of government monopolies and inevitably just collapses onto its own way from overborrowing. Uh, and so that's, that's inevitable in our future. So what we can do now is just prepare ourselves to that moment. Kind of like what's going on in Venezuela. Their, their currency is worthless. Um, but we can have this foresight to see what happens and we look at patterns of what happens to other countries uh, and prepare ourselves for that tradition. So it can be peaceful. It doesn't have to be violent. Um, did you ever hear about modern monetary theory? Uh, what about it? Well, modern monetary theory is a macroeconomic idea. Like, you know how Bush created a bunch of money for the Iraq war, but it didn't screw up inflation? I don't know much about that. You know how Bush like did a lot? Okay. You get me. You know how Bush created a lot of deficit spending, but it didn't like destroy the value of the dollar for the Iraq war? That's because a sovereign government, an entity with like its own sovereign currency, can print as much money as it is able to produce resources as long as it's not tied to like the gold standard or silver standard. Like, So this only works with fiat money. And it only works with, with um, a nation with a sovereign currency. And I know you're probably thinking five more Republicans in Zimbabwe. And in both of those instances, like they had events going on that drastically reduced the economic productivity of those countries and as like the reason that it failed in those instances is because they were they were both forced to produce money from one reason or the other um, for, and they had to produce money way out of line with what kind of what the total resources they are producing and another example like the Obama stimulus package introducing pouring a lot of money into the economy not really driving up prices that much but this is this is kind of this is inevitable. This this is uh, this is already calculated. I mean, the thing is, you have other factors in terms of like unproductivity that you kind of create, and you find that nearly half. I mean, tax aid was just a couple of days ago, right? Nearly half your income is, is taken away from government. You have to work one third of the entire year just to pay taxes. And it, you know, you could say 1776 started off with one percent tax. Now it's literally 30 to 50 percent, and that can only continue to go higher and higher and higher until you lose the incentive to like why create a business when it's, you know it's, there's no profit involved in it anymore. Why continue you to go to work like they, they have syntax to prevent people from smoking cigarettes don't you think taxes on your income and your productivity will also deter productivity in the long term oh yes and I'm well familiar with the concept of the Laffer curve but like with like the like all the big corporations and politicians and all the like evil people in power that you're talking about like understand they're and probably we like, what we won't if we just say the curve As is like right here, and this is the point where you will generate the maximum amount of revenue, everything. where instead, like, everything we're probably like somewhere along this line, so like, we could definitely raise corporate taxes a lot, and ta and the reason why you want to raise them on corporations and not the rest of us is because like, fire. if like with wealthy we people, you don't too. need Let's to... Put it out. But, like, if you're really, really rich, you don't need to spend as much as your income to maintain your standard of living as, like, you and I. Like, you and I, we have to, like, actually spend our money on, like, groceries and car payments and, like... Go how much, do, how much do you think the 1% pays in uh, altogether their taxes? In terms of all the taxes are paid, what percentage do you think is the 1% responsible for? Um... I always knew she would be I'm not sure off the top of my head. I know that there are all kinds of loopholes that let them get out of the 35% tax rate and like I never once all kinds of other stuff. 43% of all taxes, the 1% pays for. The top 20% of all the income making people, they pay 6 to 9% of all taxes. I'm not, I'm not a billionaire myself, but the people who have those money, they pay a huge chunk of money in taxes. That's never talked about. Okay, um, are you familiar with the Lorenz curve? No. Okay, the Lorenz curve is basically a distribution of wealth based off of like various 20%. And if you look it up, you'll find Today that like the top the reason for that is like the top one percent owns like way 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 like 
an extremely I'm high amount, that result, like the a major portion of the wealth, results, like the, the one percent took I'm in fifty-two to ninety-five percent of revenue from I'm like the, the rebuilding of the economy the after the two thousand eight Wall Street crash. What do you think? Um, then you call it redistribution. I, I call it we theft, all have a right? To right? When we call it theft, we taking someone's right property without their consent. Protected. What do you need that Today much property for? for it's not. Uh, I would say it's not our business. What I do with my property, right? If it long as it's consensual and voluntarily traded, right? It's not my business what these people do. What uh, what two homosexual people want to do? Going to business and going to a contractual relationship with other homosexual employees and what they want to pay each other. That's their business. I, that's not my business as long as it's consensual. Um, would you say? And then uh, if that's just the Find that way, taking someone's You're property without their consent. How is taxation then not theft in itself? I now present to you, Ms. Emeline, taxation Kelsey is Brown, like according to modern monetary theory, like the re, like taxation takes money out of the economy to make sure like you have like a happy balance to make sure that hyperinflation doesn't become a thing. How, how do they take it though? Um, well, part of the nation state model is you have to agree to certain tax to pay for tax to give up some freedom in order for security and like you could definitely make the argument that we're trading way too much freedom and not even getting the right amount of security for that but ultimately like you're gonna have to break, like if you want to like go for a communal type system you're gonna have to break up the nation state and that's just not gonna happen so the thing is so you're saying Taxes are justified because you give up certain freedoms and in return you get security. So taxes are not legitimate. Well, taxes are not legitimate then if there's no security to be provided. Now, here's something: many Supreme Court rulings have said time and over, like Warren versus District of Columbia, Duchenne versus Winnie Baker County. Supreme Court rulers have said that there's no obligation, no duty to protect your life, liberty, or property does not exist. So therefore, if there's no security granted to, even when the government says we have no obligation to provide it, then you then have no political allegiance to surrender such freedoms or give them your property. By the definition you just gave, then taxation is invalid. It doesn't exist here. Well, in those instances, yes, and what you do about that is you get in office, you start a movement, you get in office, you get with, you make sure that you start appointing judges who understand that yes it is the government's freaking job to provide some base standard of security i mean the thing is government must first violate your security first before anything government does they need taxes so the first thing they have to do is threaten you your security, your life, your property, you must surrender your property before they can make any claim of what they're going to do with it. it the cop, when you don't pay your taxes, you're levied a fine. If you don't pay that fine, cops would come in, kick down your door, and at gunpoint, throw a haul you into a cage. And if you try to escape or run away, you get murdered, right? So you can't say, if I'm in the business of protecting your life, liberty, property, I must first necessarily violate your life, liberty, property. Right, so in that argument, then in that logic, government can't even do that. Well, um, even if you want to like total like go for a community style, like like change our humanity, like human nature to go for a communal style systems, you're gonna have like even in those communities, you're gonna have your own set of rules. Like you can't just do whatever you want. Yeah, we can have rules. Yes, yes. Whatever you want, right. and like. You're still going to have those rules, and you're still, and like those rules are like some form of restriction. Like you are going to have to abide by X, in because like those rules are meant to make sure that we are all functioning together. But the difference is that these rules are rules that before I move into like this community, I see the rules in front of me. I see it as a contract and I can sign explicitly with my signature that I agree to these rules and the terms and conditions. The rules we have with government, we have no explicit consent. I can't withdraw my consent. What do you think voting's for? Uh, voting gives you the illusion that uh, you know if you beg for the right politician, you might get some table scraps of freedom. It's a distraction.
Uh, voting has never set anyone free. It just, uh, it just gives us the idea that maybe we could have this possibility of freedom, but one, one piece of legislation that repeals one bad law when you have 1,000 orders that come in the same year, you know? It's that Charlie Brown thing, you know? Yeah, vote, vote harder next year. If you pull the lever even stronger, maybe you'll have some freedom next year. Look, I totally understand, like, you gotta have, like, people who are running who are going to fix the injustices that you correctly mentioned and you gotta have that and I'm trying to like study political science so I can do that it's uh the syphilis uh, that um this is a mythical person that kind of pushes this boulder up and down this hill when he pushes this uh, yeah syphilis uh, and as far as it gets, can get it just goes down the other way it's just there's, there's always going to be a win lose relationship between you and the government and that's just the nature of, of the beast um i would say the solution then is like not to continue like waste our entire lives just trying to get one law repealed when thousands of orders will get into place or one tax repeal when thousand orders will be put into place uh just just abolish the whole thing i don't need to be babysitters to politicians to make sure that they're behaving or political supreme court rulers that they're making sure that they're reading this ancient document that was written 200 years ago that i, I never wrote that does have me but that ancient document does have mechanisms to amend it to adjust with our times. Like that's how women can vote, that's how black people can vote, that's how I could vote at the age of 18. Yeah, and, and uh, they also can repeal it, you know, uh, the only one that they repeal, and they also punish some uh, laws of uh, prohibition, right? And for one point, it was wrong and illegal and immoral to drink alcohol, right? Uh, so as easily as they, they can repeal it, because that's the only one they have repealed, the 19th Amendment, they could easily take it away. Right? Why give it your chance? I think your rights don't come from a piece of paper or from politicians or government. That they're inalienable. They even says so in the Constitution. They're inalienable rights. They don't come from a dog, magical document called the Constitution. They come from being a person. These are natural rights. So it doesn't matter what other people write. Right? You as a human being has this natural right to self-defense, to own your own body. Right? As long as it's voluntary consensual, your interactions with others is no one else's business to legislate or to take any of that away from you. We are going to have to obey the traffic clause. And there is one other function of like government that I don't know how well communal, um, like informal governance could really do, and that is the collective action dilemma. Like what? Like building things like roads and bridges and other infrastructure stuff, and not being ta like and not having to use tolls, tolls of what happens when you privatize those things. So all these things, all these roads, at one point used to be privatized in the past. Government through eminent domain took all this sort of stuff so they can control the access of where people are kind of moving around. Um, and here in Virginia, government doesn't build any of these roads. Businesses do. I have friends in the road making business. So what government does then, a lot of people don't even know this. That, so they'll take your money through force, through threat of force, and they'll give it to the politically connected and it'll be businesses that go ahead and fill these potholes and build these roads. Government doesn't build any of this stuff. So we have an example then there's businesses to build it so what happens without government the same businesses will continue to bait to build them at least you'll be in control and deciding which one gets your gets your money gets your uh, your investment so it's not like a, a difficult thing I, I think a lot of these people think we, we grew up with government so of course like in 1984 all we're gonna know is this government but they had a whole rich history behind us and how many of these things were provided by the market but now government has, through eminent domain, monopolized it. And now all we think is only government, like in Virginia, can provide alcohol, right? They have ABC. We know businesses can also provide alcohol, but that's an archaic thing that government will find difficult in the long term to, uh, to get rid of. I don't know, like, I don't mind giving up my money to the government to have them do things like building boats to make it easier for me to travel. And it would ultimately be better than having to constantly pay a toll every time. I have to go on them. But the thing is, it's not so much that you don't mind, you have no choice. It's non-consensual. You can't ever withdraw that consent. And that's what this march is about, right, in terms of consent. You, if you, what, happens if you say, what happens if you say no to government? Well, it is not, like, sexual consent and consent to how you integrate into society are two fundamentally different concepts. And don't do that false equivalency shit. No, no, define consent for me then. If you know the term, you have it on your sign, define consent. In a sexual context? No, define the word consent. Consent means agreeing to, like, giving your agreement for a certain thing to happen. Giving like, your agreement for a certain thing to happen. Okay, like and then is that voluntary? Sexual context, 
Yes, voluntary non-coerce. Oh, by the way, the march is going voluntary on. Voluntary non-coercive, right? So are you saying taxation is uh, voluntary non-coercive? Um, the consent is implied by living in the state. Uh, that, you know, rapists say that. If you're walking this alley, you deserve to be raped. You're walking in my geographic region. You're making the same argument they're making and passing it on to the government doing the same thing. That's inherently... It's the same thing. You're, saying, you're making the same argument. You're in my... Uh, my neighborhood. I get to tax you. You're walking down this the alley. I get to you. The point of this much is that that is inherently unreasonable. Like, like the whole like implied consent for like walking down the alleyway wearing that dress, right, yeah. drinking alcohol. Like, look up against that. This movement has absolutely nothing to do with the philosophy of government. It has to do with the philosophy of consent, body ownership. It's wrong for anyone it only to, without my permission to to touch me, to take anything from me. This thing is about sexual consent, not government consent. Well, you know, I universalize consent. I value consent in all my relationships. And I think it's very important then to analyze and define that. As we were talking about, a lot of people in the very beginning don't take a moment to define what is consent. You made that, you made that comment. So I'm defining it as uh, universally, that's something regardless of where it takes place in all relationships, in all interpersonal uh, interactions with human beings. And the thing is, how it stands, your relationship with government is not consensual. You don't pay your taxes. They threaten you. They threaten your life to take that from you. No one, it's like a mugger comes in the alley, hey, give me your wallet. You don't pay him your wallet. You surrender your property. Let's, you want to get hurt. Any last comments? No, but I right. just want to finish. <laughs> All right, coloring. thank you so much for the uh, conversation. Okay. And uh, continue march.